I want to talk about Cyclops. So Cyclops is our DMRV system uh, that we have been working on for quite a while now, putting all the pieces together. Um, so what do we mean by DMRV? Uh, so one of the things that you've probably seen from a number of these panels is that trust is a big part of any market and certainly something the carbon market needs um, urgently. When we talk about carbon as a digital asset, which it really is, uh, we were talking to Joe about this earlier, for a digital asset, because there's no physical uh, entity to verify, you need monitoring across the supply chain to enable both parties to have trust that there is a virtual asset here that is valuable. So what does that mean in, uh, in concrete terms? So Cyclops starts with a focus on the nature-based market. And the goal here is to use a vast amount of satellite data and uh, you know, cutting edge evolving artificial intelligence algorithms to assess the health of a forest at a very granular level. And that's really the purpose here, is for forestry-based, nature-based carbon assets, can we build that trust where you can have monitoring that is remote, doesn't, you don't need to send ground teams, which is expensive, slow, and very difficult to manage, and very difficult to scale, and utilize what we have in the remote sensing world to assess the health of a forest and then be able to facilitate the generation of carbon assets from that. Without sufficient monitoring, which what is what we have currently in the system, a lot of nature-based offsets or nature-based carbon, uh, it's difficult to value them, the quality is low, and often what you find is that, you know, uh, the end realization of how much carbon there is has a lot of debate and ends up being often overstated. So to really address a lot of these problems, we want a high resolution, high frequency monitoring of carbon sequestration and utilize the best in class technologies and available data to do so. Um, you know, this is all part of providing scale transparency and accountability. Um, you know, one of the things that we believe very firmly at Cyclops, D-Climate, Arbol is that to really tackle the climate uh, risk issue, to tackle carbon markets, we need scalable methods. We cannot rely on methods that involve subjective human assessment, that involve very clunky, expensive processes. Um, when we started Arbol back in 2018, that was the premise with insurance as well. You can't have a system where an adjuster shows up to your uh, farm or business after a climate disaster and then we spend months and months haggling over an insurance check. You need digital solutions, you need data and algorithms to assess loss and move on. Um, in a similar way, you're not gonna be able to scale carbon markets uh, nature-based carbon markets, any kind of emission carbon markets, until you can monitor at scale. And that needs to be monitoring across, um, you know, a wide area, but at a high resolution. Similarly, that monitoring needs to be transparent. Gone are the days where we can just have things as black boxes and have some agency tell you that this is how much carbon is there. That doesn't work. It creates a system that is prone to abuse and uh, many other issues. And finally, by monitoring frequently and at a high enough resolution, you can bring accountability to carbon systems. So to us, for example, the way carbon offsets are uh, often managed, uh, at least in nature-based setting, is a concept that looks backwards. It looks at retiring past actions. We want carbon markets to be forward-looking. We want uh, the generators of uh, carbon assets to get their fair share, 
conditional on them fulfilling the requirements that they are supposed to, such as protecting the forest that they are supposed to. That accountability can only come if you can monitor at scale and at a frequent enough basis. This can't be a five-year ground survey sample of you know, 100 hectares. When you start talking about millions of hectares, this, the, this is the only way you can do this. And, you know, we all have talked about a lot of the problems um, today. And, you know, basically what you have currently is a market that is very heterogeneous in quality. It is very prone to, um, you know, fudging of numbers, uh, sometimes on purpose, sometimes just because there's poor measurement. And you have extremely high transaction costs as a result. You know, when you have really immature markets where there is a, a problem of asymmetric information, you're going to have brokers and uh, other intermediaries that charge excessive amounts to source better supply. We want to remove that aspect. So by, again, having that monitoring that is standardized and can be done at scale in an affordable way, you start to bring the bid offer spread closer where I want to buy and where you want to sell becomes a far smaller gap when you can understand what is exactly going on here. Um, and, uh, you know, that's something that we are big believers in, in terms of, you know, how do we get this market to be institutional? How do we get it from um, essentially a hobby project on the side to be something where a large institution like a bank or insurance company and others can trust? Uh, these are the problems we just talked about. You can keep going. Cost, speed, and accuracy. Uh, so what does our solution look like? Well, we aim for simplicity. We have always strived for that in all the products we release. And here, we want to, we want to make it as simple as possible, as intuitive as possible for anyone to have access. Um, you know, we have standardized regions. We have customized regions. And the goal really is to be able to Pick an area and view what has been happening. And we're not tr we're just showing what's the current or the future. We, are all, we have also painstakingly built past histories of these places. Why have we done that? That's how you start to get real baselining. Uh, you know, when we talk about the impact that a particular project has, we cannot judge that impact in a meaningful way unless we know the history of what has been happening in this place. So if you have 20 years of history of what this forest has been doing, how much has been deforested, that's your first step to understanding, okay, over the next five years I did this project, what impact did I have versus a long-term history versus a long-term trend. Um, so it was important for us to build both sides, the ongoing monitoring as well as the past. Um, and, you know, the... For developers, we want to make it as easy as possible for them to add more areas and, you know, have a lot of these features. Uh, next. Um, in addition to, you know, building baselines for carbon markets, one of the other benefits, uh, like uh, one of the other features we have is detection of degradation of forests. And what we're working on next is prediction of these. Which areas of your project need extra monitoring? Maybe those need ground monitoring. Which are more susceptible to degradation given recent history? Um, you know, another aspect that what comes about of having history is you can have insurance and other financial products. The one of the issues with underwriting carbon offset insurance is a lack of uh, standardized data that goes back far enough. And we, on the insurance side, see this all the time. Unless you have a 10 to 20 year history, how can you insure this forest? And without insurance, the market will always be a little hobbled because you've had companies who buy forestry offsets and then forest burns down. There needs to be some degree of protection on these assets that will increase their value and again, bring much more liquidity. Um, next. Uh, yeah, these are just steps and, 
you know, we can talk through, as I said, uh, next, select a tile. You can see a lot of the data around a particular tile or your particular area. You can track deforestation uh, via satellite images at six months or one month or whatever the satellite pass intervals are. Um, you can save regions, you can create your own customized regions. Um, all the information is uh, quite intuitive to use. Uh, we wanna make sure any product we build should be explainable in like five minutes. Um, next. We have uh, for, especially for project developers, we can save regions, we can um, make it so you have a full dashboard of the regions you work in and are able to access that information anytime you need. Um, and full data reports that can then feed into other reports that you maybe need for your own stakeholders. Um, so that's, you know, that's the general premise around what we are trying to achieve. Now, one of the things that comes out of it, one of the things that comes out of our focus on blockchain is also an immutable ledger of forestry data. This can then help to create the digital assets that we have been talking about. As we add more areas, you create a ledger. Um, next. And you know, one of the things that um, comes up is how are we assessing, how are we combining satellite data into assessing the forest? We have worked a lot on understanding the different kinds of AI algorithms out there to assess different parts of this problem. So when you're trying to assess a forest, there is obviously deforestation that takes away biomass. There's also natural forest growth that is countering that. And so the model tries to combine aspects of computer vision, generative AI, and other inputs to understand how a forest is growing and where it's losing that growth. And it's that figuring out that balance that allows it to assess biomass and then sequestered carbon from that. So there's a, there's a large number of inputs, uh, public, and uh, we're adding private data sets as well, as well as radar and optical. And as we get new satellites up, we are very, very flexible on fusing these. The other, to me, one of the more interesting parts of Cyclops is its ability to ingest LIDAR and ground data. And this is how we make a system that goes beyond just taking input X variables and putting out a Y variable. So as we partner with different groups, um, as we partner with ground developers, we also uh, are ready to incorporate their ground data. And we'll have some major sort of announcements on these over the coming months. As we can partner with more entities and have more customers, our customers become also a great input data set for us. So the more customers we get, the better Cyclops gets uh, on the project side. And that's how we build that feedback loop that takes our MRV system uh, to the next level, which is being able to incorporate ground data and LIDAR in a flexible way and build that feedback loop of size leading to a better model, which then allows us to get larger. Next. Um, you know, why do we need this? I think this has been pretty clear from our talks today. There is a massive demand supply gap in the carbon offset market. There is a lot of supply, but it's mostly low quality garbage. And how do we take carbon offsets, carbon credits, these different digital assets and make them high quality, it is going to be via monitoring. Cyclops is starting out on nature-based. We're not going to stop there. Next up will be methane. Next up will be emissions. It will be across the entire carbon space. And our underlying goal will continue to be the same, which is high resolution, high frequency monitoring at an affordable cost and bringing more and more data into our ecosystem through declimate and utilizing that data to keep the model, uh, to, to, to keep uh, improving the model. Um, in closing, you know, one of the things that for me at least, I think 
for me, one of the key things when I looked at carbon markets was its similarity to other immature markets like insurance, where you have extremely subjective uh, assessment um, and general lack of uh, standardization. And that was the whole purpose here. The, the, and I've had some experience in the remote sensing space, always been near and dear to my heart. I think that given the proliferation of satellite data, LIDAR data, and the needs here, Cyclops will be the system that, you know, we aim to make it a market standard for nature-based offsets to start with across the globe. And um, yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, next. Yeah, um, we, uh, you know, uh, our, our URL is uh, cyclops.ai. The last thing I want to get into, and we'll be releasing a lot more information about this over the coming months and weeks, but we have some great launch partners. Dabio is uh, based out of Korea. Um, and, uh, you know, they are doing very, very interesting work in the AI field under uh, and various aspects like object recognition. So we'll have a partnership uh, with them to really, uh, you know, understand tree level deforestation and many other aspects of the carbon uh, monitoring ecosystem. And uh, we're very excited about that. Next. Um, I think we missed one. Did we miss one? Go up one, sorry, yeah, Alcott. Um, we've been working with Alcott team for a few months now. They're uh, uh, in the project development space and uh, they are going to uh, be working with us both to assess monitoring at a local level and we'll be working with them to see how ground data can continue to improve Cyclops. And they have projects at a number of locations and uh, that's been a great partnership for us to understand the needs of project developers, and two more. And finally, Rainforest Partnership. Um, you know, they're great. We've been, uh, you know, working with them for uh, also a few months now. And again, same thing. They work in a vast array of locations in South America and many others. And what we have learned from working with the project developer space, it has been, uh, uh, you know, an invaluable tool to make Cyclops usable. This isn't, uh, we try not to build just a tech product and uh, build it and they'll come. We want to work with people on the ground. We want to work with people who are literally in the forests day to day and understand what their needs are and how do we incorporate that data to improve Cyclops. And we want that two-way feedback loop all the time. Um, we talked about this. You know, at the end of the day, the goal is to provide um, a system that can give value to nature-based assets. And as, uh, as nature-based assets gain value, that is how we will solve the climate crisis. You have to have value transfer from those who are polluting to those who are helping protect the environment and reducing that pollution. And um, I think, yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, the presentation today on Cyclops. Um, I hope you guys go to the website, check it out, and I think you'll find it interesting uh, in terms of where we are. And I think um, you know what the market needs is this kind of DMRV system to to standardize the uh, assessment of what is going on on the ground. I think, um, as I said, forestry-based carbon is first. Next will be methane and emissions. And over time, we want to be in, uh, you know, we want Cyclops across the entire carbon monitoring chain. Thank you.